Hey, I'm Chaz, this is Khan, and this is a shoe off. Hello everyone, it's getting close to the 10 week mark from the Chicago Marathon. In fact, when this video airs, I think it's gonna be 69 days uh, before the Chicago Marathon, and I am trying to decide which marathon shoes I'm gonna wear for the marathon. And the choices are the Nike Vaporfly 3, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, the Adidas Adios Pro 3, the Asics Metaspeed Edge Plus, and the Hoka Rocket X2. Uh, so that's five choices. And uh, I'm going to do a workout, sort of a workout, a marathon pace workout, where I take each of those five shoes on the same route, 1.4 mile route-ish, nine minute route at marathon pace. And I'm going to do it at marathon pace uh, after a warm up, of course, uh, and just kind of see how they feel all running in them back to back to back to back to back. Uh, on the same day, so I could have more of a direct comparison and everything would be fresh in the memory. Uh, now, in order to do that, um, of course, you know, the, the ones that I test earlier and later at the end of the run, depending on fatigue, I, I might have to take that into consideration. I figure the only way to choose the order in which I test them fairly is to write them all down on folded slips of paper and pick them out of a box. So, the first one, going to be the Hoka Rocket X2. That'll be first. And then Metaspeed Edge Plus will be second. Endorphin Pro 3 will be third. Uh, so we still got the Vaporfly and the Adios Pro. Adios Pro 3 will be fourth, and that means the last one, which I'm going to be most tired when I test, is the lightest one, actually, and that will be the Vaporfly 3. All right, so that's the order in which I'm going to test them. We'll see you then. Don't know if I'll be able to close it. All right, I'm going to skip ahead in time here. I've already done uh, the shoe off run with all five shoes, but before we get into that part of the video, I want you to predict which you think my top pick for the marathon will be. So go ahead and uh, hit pause on this video and comment in the comment section which one uh, you think my pick will be or which one your pick would be out of the five that I listed. All right, good luck. Okay, so this is a 1.35 mile or 2.17 kilometer loop that starts off with a couple of little rolly sections. Um, right around the halfway part, you kind of go up a hill. We're getting to it right here, right there. And then it's a straight shot back into town uh, where you're just trying to avoid the traffic. A little bit of an uphill trend, but mostly flat from here on out um, until you make one last left turn coming up right there, then back to where you started. Okay, so... I'm finishing my warm-up here in a few minutes. The sun is coming up, so I hopefully won't need to shine a light on my face during this run. Anyway, I've done a shoe off like this before, before I've had a YouTube channel. And it seems like both the first and the last shoes are a bit at a disadvantage. The last shoe, because I'm tired, and the first shoe, because I'm still kind of finishing my warm-up. So, with the first shoe being the Hoka Rocket X2, the last shoe being, being the Vapor Pot, blah, 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 the Vapor Fly 3, we'll see how that affects their performance. First up, Hoka Rocket X2. Sure, it's nice to run in a racing shoe right after warming up in a clunker. So going from a trainer into the first racing shoe 
I immediately noticed the response from the rigid carbon plate and the Piba foam. As it's going a little bit fast on this first rep, but very energetic so far. All right, Hoka Rocket X2 down. A6 Meta Speed Edge Plus, go. So the Meta Speed Edge is the only one of these five where I opted to go up a half size. That does allow some wiggle room in the forefoot, which is good. I can tell right off the bat, it's a little bit stiffer than the Hoka. Kind of settled down to closer to marathon pace in the Edge Plus. Still a little fast, but I think this shoe wants to go faster. Not sure what I think about it at marathon pace yet. Finishing Meta Speed Edge Plus right now. Same time exactly as the Hoka. <sighs> On to number three. Saucony Endorphins Pro 3, go. The Endorphin Pro 3 are immediately softer than the Asics. So much so that on the couple hundred feet of downhill at the start of the loop, we ended up flying just because of the cushion. Got it calmed down now. Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 ending now. Pretty consistent. They've all been within uh, one second of each other. Adios, adios, Pro 3, starting now. It's in. I've been running in the first three shoes. With the Adios Pro 3, I am conscious and noticing the recesses cut into the forefoot and this foot of the midsole, which I never seem to notice when I run in the shoe in isolation. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but it's interesting. So the Light Strike Pro in the Adios 3 is not Piba like the other shoes. TPEE. -E. And while it's not as bouncy or pliant as the Piva shoes, the energy rods versus full carbon plates allow a little more flex and spring. So it kind of evens out. It's interesting. Adidas Adios Pro 3 ending now. Still the same time as the other ones. All right, last one, Vaporfly, Vaporfly 3, starting now. Nike Vaporfly 3 finishing now. Whew. That was the fastest by about four seconds. It's probably because it was the last one though.
All right, now it's time for everyone's favorite part of my videos, which is the shoe talk. I'm still dripping with sweat because I wanted to get my thoughts in order right after the end of that run. Um, yeah, so we'll go in order really quick with just kind of a, a summary of each shoe. Hoka Rocket X2 was the first one I tried out after my warm up, and I was just uh, amazed at how direct it felt. It still had that responsive um, pushback, not quite as, uh, as soft as you would expect. You could really feel the uh, carbon plate um, springing back, uh, the stiffness of it, but stiff in a good way. Upper was uh, very secure, uh, didn't allow a lot of movement. It's more, it's kind of like a, a ripstop almost type of material. So it's, if it fits your foot well, great if not you know then you might look at something with a little more accommodating upper uh meta speed edge plus uh trying this on right after the hoka i immediately noticed how um stiff it was again i'm not saying stiff is a bad thing i think the uh flight foam turbo is a very energetic foam um it does seem to me that it wants to run a little bit faster. The miles I've done in this previously before today have been mostly in the tempo or faster range. Trying to keep this down to marathon pace um, required a conscious effort. And at marathon pace, I don't know if it was uh, quite as forgiving as some of the others. So that'll kind of give you uh, a preview of what I think about this one for a marathon shoe. Uh, it did have the most accommodating forefoot because I did need to size up a half size in this. Um, some of you might be able to go true to size. I chose a half size up. Endorphin Pro 3, uh, much softer than the Metaspeed Edge Plus. I would say it's softer than the Hoka as well. Um, I have won a marathon in this shoe before, another pair of this exact shoe. Um, it has a very airy upper, very forgiving upper. It was um, <clears throat> nice to not have to think about the upper. Uh, the midsole was very soft, very forgiving. Uh, I don't know if it was quite as energetic as the Hoka. Um, we'll talk about the outsole as well. Um, I did, there were a couple of wet spots on the course that I purposely ran through. Uh, it rained last night and I just wanted to get some wet pavement, you know, traction test. This one probably has the least uh, grip on wet asphalt and you would think with that big out outsole that wouldn't be the case but it's just it's a little bit harder of a rubber so it doesn't have quite as much of that tacky grip um, adidas adios pro 3 uh, this one as i said i could feel these recesses in the midsole that i'm sure are there to cut down weight they also kind of make the shoe look cool uh, i expected this one to be the least forgiving just because of the different nature of the foam. Uh, but as I noticed on the run, the TPEE had a very uh, nice synergy with these energy rods. While it's not as bouncy as a, a Piba foam, you do get some compression and spring uh, combined with those energy rods that, that, that gives you a very super shoe-like performance. It is, a, it is a super shoe. It does compete well with these others. It's just kind of a different flavor of bounce. The upper, I mean, the upper works. It is um, utilitarian. I don't think it's near the best upper out of all of these, uh, but uh, it works for what it is. Uh, if you were really in love with the midsole and the response of the shoe, then the upper wouldn't hold you back necessarily. The Vaporfly. Um, it's hard to compete with a Vaporfly. They're always at the top of, of most runners' lists. And um, I mentioned it on the run briefly. Uh, it's hard to think of this as a Vaporfly after trying out all the other four shoes first. Uh, because you, you step into a Vaporfly and you expect that energetic bounce back um, and that, that pushing you off the forefoot. This version, as I've heard others say, it doesn't really push you off the forefoot as much as past versions do. I did get a little bit more give uh, and soft response in the midsole than I feel like I have from uh, previous vapor flies, namely the next percent one. I did not have the two, uh, but that also might be because those uh, versions 
are a little bit older now and some of that uh, cushion may have firmed up over time. I just ran into Vaporfly 1 in a workout a few days ago and it felt definitely firmer than this. Uh, I do feel like I got a good bit of spring. I feel like the waffle outsole is a step up as far as traction. Uh, it's a bit too early to say what that will do as far as the longevity of the shoe. All of these shoes here uh, are have under 50 miles on them, so they're all kind of in the sweet spot uh, as far as mileage. Uh, none of them have really been worn out yet. Uh, the upper on this one, it's the lightest upper, it's very airy. However, it is also the only upper that I did a runner's loop on uh, to really lock down the heel. The first time I ran in this shoe, which was just a little shakeout right before the Elm Street 10 miler, I did notice a little bit of heel slip, probably would not have amounted to anything, but it was in my head, so I just threw on a runner's loop right before the race. And um, yeah, you can't argue with it, it's gonna be a fantastic shoe. I just don't know if it's gonna be at the top of this list of five. Um, I think as far as if I were to go from the bottom up, as far as my least favorite choice, I'm gonna preface that by saying any of these five shoes I think would be a fantastic marathon shoe. If someone uh, said that I had to reach into a box blindfolded and pick out a random pair of shoes out of these five to run a marathon, I don't think I would have a bad choice. I think I, I, they would all work well. But if I were to rank them starting with the bottom up, the uh, last choice, um, for the marathon distance, the last choice is probably gonna be the Metaspeed Edge Plus. And I know I spent a lot of time reviewing this shoe. I love this shoe. And it might be my shoe for the Battleship Half Marathon in November or for some shorter races. I just, um, as firm as that response was, I don't know if that's what I'd want at the end of a marathon. I feel like I had to, uh, when you slow down to marathon pace, this one loses a little bit of its effectiveness and it, it wants to go half marathon pace or faster. So that's number five. Moving on to number four. Adios Pro 3, Adidas. Again, this is a great shoe, and I think it skews towards the half marathon and the marathon. Um, and I think I just might need the right race for this shoe. I don't know if Chicago is the right race for this shoe. I think this would do well on a hilly race. Um, it's resilient. I have done a 20 miler in this shoe with some marathon pace, and um, yeah, it definitely felt good. I don't know if it had the magic um, hopping right into pace today, it felt good. But again, I, I think I might want something uh, with a little bit more, I don't know, magic <laughs> X factor uh, at the end of a marathon. So this will be number four. Moving on to number three. Wonder how everyone's predictions are going so far. Um, as it stands right now, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is at number three, but it's a really tight number three. These top three are pretty close together. Uh, I would have no problem doing long marathon training in this shoe. I've won a marathon in this shoe, LRB Marathon. Granted, that was a very hilly marathon with about 1,500 feet of gain, and it was nowhere near a PR pace. That was something where it was good to have something a little softer on the foot. And I've done really well at a 10K in this exact pair, uh, as you might notice from earlier videos. But um, shooting for a PR marathon, um, I know Derek would disagree with me because he's run a 248 in these recently. Um, this would be up there, but I don't know that it's gonna be my top pick for Chicago. So that's number three. Number two, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? <sighs> so, um, between the Vapor Th Vaporfly 3 and the Rocket X2, I think the runner up in this case for this race is gonna be the Vaporfly 3, which means I'm gonna go with the Rocket X2. And the reason for that is I think the geometry of the Rocket X2 just works with my stride really well. Something about that five millimeter drop and the way this um, early stage Meta Rocker rolls smoothly, it gets all the smoothness of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 with a lot of the response 
of the MetaSpeed Edge Plus, although it's a little bit more forgiving, more like the Vaporfly. Uh, I'm all locked down. I don't really feel like the weight is an issue. There wasn't a problem with the traction. As of right now, this is gonna be my marathon shoe for Chicago. And this is a close runner up. Maybe I'll pack this one and it might be a game, day, uh, game time decision, but uh, I'm gonna bank on the Hoka Rocket X2 to be the shoe of the day for Chicago. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, don't forget, um, LSD is an, always an important uh, part of your training. It also means like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications.